All right, Shalom on Maki, I'm out there. Uh, first and foremost, Ka Halal Yah Bashanah Shai, Mashanah Kabah Shalak Yayam, Shalom Bakasah Laha Bakyar. And we want to thank Yah Bashanah Shai for allowing us to do another GMS ball that come quickly. Under the installments of GMS Inspiration and Motivation number eight. And uh, today we, we uh, you know, the, the, the Spirit of the Most High allowed us brothers to come together. And uh, we labeled this one Born Against the Law of My Mind. Basically, this topic, we want to express how, and when you come in, it's truth that yourself, you're, you're, uh, you're your own worst enemy. Because this, this, this particular scripture that I'm, this particular title that I, uh, that, that I quoted is actually something that Paul stated in the book of Romans, the seventh chapter, which and, and when he stated that warring against the law of my mind, he was explaining that he was his own worst enemy. And that's something that you that you experience when you come in as truth, man. That you, you yourself is your own worst enemy, man. You know, matter of fact, let's let's read that particular verse straight to the point. Uh, what you Romans? Yeah, Romans. Seven. Romans seven. And when he says uh, warring against the law of my mind. Okay, uh, I got it. So this is uh, Romans seven and um, and uh, I'm gonna start at uh, I'm gonna start at twenty one. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna start at nineteen. So like, all right. So it says, for the good that I would that I would I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of the Most High after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind. So Paul was explaining that um, his own self, that he... Uh he fight against his own self within his head, man. And he's totally right about that because when you come in his truth, you're experiencing that. That's what you're dealing with on a daily basis. You, you're dealing with fighting against your own self all the day long, warring against your own self all the day long, you know? And uh, uh, a man pushing and fighting to be blameless will come to understanding that these battles, these battles in your head, man, these, these ain't no average battles, man. These these battles could be considered worse than actual war, man. Yeah. You know? That's why, you know, because you hear a brother say that, uh, you know, you your own worst self. I mean, you your own worst enemy and it's truth. It's, you know, then when you really think upon that, you, you, th that's some serious, that's really serious, man, because that, don't, that really determines if you're going to be in this truth or not because you battling with yourself, you can either give in to the, um, to the flesh or you, can, or you can stay right, man. That's how serious your own self, you being your own worst enemy is, man. Yeah, that's true, man, because it's, it, it's actually, it is a war, man. It's your, your flesh, like you said right here, is warring, it's your flesh warring against your spirit, man. Because we've been in this place, we was raised up in this place, Babylon, man, to be uh, complacent, to be yeah. fucking, you know, wherever the hell we came from, man, to be uh, lazy, to be fucking, it's a, it's a whole bunch of shit that we gotta break out of, man. Like, for example, in the world, I didn't like reading at all, man. You, would, you wouldn't catch me reading, man. You know, but in this truth, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a commandment yeah. that you read, man. It's one of the ways that you, that you, that you, it's a healing, man. Yeah. It's a healing, it's food, it's nurturing, you know, for your spirit. And it's water, it keeps you spiritually hydrated, man. Mm -hmm. So it's a necessity. So if you came from that spirit of not wanting to, using that as an example, wanting to read, you know, you gotta, when you come into this truth, that's one war that you gotta fight against yourself, man. You gotta, you gotta beat that shit up and, and, and do what you gotta do, man. Yeah. Yeah, so much. It says, uh, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Yeah, that's right, man. So, you know, a man, a man that comes in truth and he real diligent, he want to stay blameless. He understand that these, these battles are spiritual. This ain't, these ain't physical battles, man. This is all, it's all in your head, man. 
And that's going to determine whether you want to be in the truth or not. Because, you know, you 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 battling in your head, man. A lot of a lot of times you you would think to yourself like, um, say for instance your your family is coming against you, all that is coming against you. They're not. It's it's even though they're coming against you, the war is not the war is not within not with the object, man. The war is the object is being used to trigger the war in your head, man. The object is being used to trigger the war in your head. Whether you're gonna give in to what the object is speaking about, which the object could be your family, woman, job, anything that's contrary to the most high could be the object. The object is trying to get you to um to, to go against the, the laws of the most high, man. So that's where the war, that's where the war is at. Yeah. And, and these are, not, like I was saying, these are not no average wars, man. Sometimes you have to fast because the war is that intense in your head, man. You got a demon messing with you. You hear brother say it all the time. That's that that's the war being. That's 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 a uh, a war if you got to fast, man. You know that's intense. You know. You have something to say? What? This is uh, Galatians chapter five verse seventeen. For the spirit lusteth against for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And that's where I want to go into because I want to explain that this is the condition of the battle. You know, it's nothing you can do about it. It's nothing you can do about it. And, and also that the Most High, he's a perfect balance, man. Get uh, Proverbs 11 and 1 real quick, bro. If I can say this, yeah, man. Ahead, I... That's why Paul said that which I want to do, I, I want not, man. Mm -hmm. Just like the brother just said, this is a, this is a, a the nature of the business, man, yeah. so to speak, man. Yeah. You know, it, it, this, this truth comes with, with uh, Having to battle yourself, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, man. Go ahead and read that out. It's Proverbs 11 and 1. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. So the Most High, when he created, when he created his his um his creatures, his his agenda, one thing that he did, gets to Rock 30, 33, and um, I believe uh Sirach 33 and 13. One thing that he did, he created good and he created evil. That don't just play out with, with Adam or or rather Jacob and Esau. The actual good and evil plays out within you too. Because your flesh, when you read Galatians the fifth chapter, your flesh is given to the evil. When you read the works of the, the flesh, it's all evilness. But then when you read the works of the spirit, it's uh, things that's um, that's uh that that coincides with Yah Bashamal Shai, so that's good and evil. So the good and the evil ain't just Jacob and Esau. It's actually yourself. You have you have the good in you and you have the evil in you. You know? Read that out. This is uh Surat 33 and 13. As the clay in the potter's hand to fashion it at his pleasure, so man is in the hand of him that made it. To render to them as like of him best. Yeah, go ahead. Good is set against evil and life against death. And life against death. Now when we go in second nature, you gonna understand that Moses was giving us that he landed, he he gave us life or death. He said, choose life or death. That's the war in your head right there. And you and you being in the flesh makes you your own worst enemy because the flesh don't give a, the flesh don't give a fuck, you know, about no life. The flesh only cares about the, the lust and the things that it want. Yeah. You know? That's why it's intense about understanding you that you're your own worst enemy, man. It's, it's real intense because once you understand that, you understand that properly or you 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 meditate upon that properly, um you create comfort in your head. You create comfort in your head because you know your boundaries. You know what you can't do and what you can't do. The things that your flesh, your flesh may give in to. The things that your spirit is stronger in. How to navigate yourself more perfectly. Good is set against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. Yeah. And what, what did Paul? We just read in Romans that Paul said. 
It's not no more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So sin is in us, man. You know? <laughs> Yeah, that's why, sin is in us. Good, huh? Yo, yo, that's why these bodies are called the chains of darkness, man. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. They, they, they were, it was created to be weak. That's why even your Howard Shah said it, man. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, man. You know? Because your flesh, all it desires is, 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 is fucking whatever it, it pleasures in, man. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, and every brother's flesh is, is different. Not every brother's flesh is the same. Uh, one brother's flesh may lust after something that another brother's flesh doesn't lust after, man. But at, but we all in that war, in that battle within our head, man. And this battle was intense. It's more intense than any fucking war that ever took place on the planet Earth, man. Because this is going to determine whether you want salvation or not. You know? You got something not? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Galatians 5 and 16. It says, This I say then, Walk in the spirit that ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. That's that's good versus evil in another uh, in another uh, part of the book. Yeah. It's written down ev uh, differently. It says the, the, the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and it says what? And, um, it says, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. So that's good versus evil within your head though. And us being, if a, a man that's a, that's um that's going to be rewarded as being an elect, they actually won the victory of the battle, which is explained in Second Edges, man. That war that they had in their head, they didn't give in to the to the flesh, but the two thirds, or you know, the two thirds, the the outsiders, man, they ass gave in to the flesh. They lost the battle, you know. It says, and these are contrary one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Which what what is the thing that that, that you that you want to do, man? You want to do right by Yahweh by Shem Yahweh man. You know, 100% of the time. Just like Paul wanted to do right 100% of the time, but like he said, that which I want to do, I I, I don't do, man. Because your your flesh your flesh is naturally wicked, man. Yeah. It's weak. Uh, it says, uh, but if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. You know, and being the Spirit is these scriptures, man. Mm -hmm. Walking according to the words of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. That's 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 the Spirit, man. That's being led by the Spirit, walking according to these scriptures. And the moment you deviate from that, you're falling into the and you're falling into the flesh, man. Yeah, that's why it makes you your own worst enemy because. You being it, you you being it within yourself, uh, you being within yourself and that lust that you have within you, you can easily give in to that shit, man. You know? <laughs> you you watching some ass shaking videos, next thing you catch your you catch yourself going a little bit too far because you just you just you want a you want a piece of you just you know you a man, you want a woman so damn bad, you start going too far, you, you know? Things are such, man. Then you start breaking the law, man. You know, things things like that, man. You catch yourself going too far, clicking on something that you should not have clicked on. Making you, that makes you your own worst enemy, man. Because you you ain't supposed to be doing that, man. You ain't supposed to be going, you ain't supposed to be uh, watching another man pop a woman, man. You're not supposed to be watching that at all or seeing another man nakedness at all. Yeah. But you so you so horny, so to speak. You just so horny that your flesh and lust is just overriding you. That's that. That's that war. That's that battle, man. Yeah. You got something to say? I got something to speak. Uh, this is John chapter six, verse sixty-three. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh. The flesh profiteth nothing. Yeah. That, there's no profit within the flesh. Not. It's, it's negative profit within it, man. That's that, like this brother quoted in Jude, the first chapter, it says that these are the chains of darkness, man. What, what profit is there in the darkness? You, you, cut a, you cut a light off in a room and you try to find your way around that room. You're going to find yourself uh, stumbling over things. That's darkness, man. But the spirit, that's light. That's the light, man. You cut, you cut the switch on, you walk in the room. You find your object and you out the room. Quick. 
you know? Yeah. Hey, because the spirit, that word quickeneth basically means to give life, man. Yeah. And when we was in the world, we was walking in the flesh, which mm -hmm. when you walking in the world, the scripture said that uh, we was dead, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Those, the, the, the flesh produces works of, 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 uh, that, that'll bring death, man. Mm -hmm. That'll bring condemnation upon yourself. So now that the spirit has um, given us that life and quickened us, man, you know, we gotta we gotta fight to not to not fucking revert back to fucking the way walking in the ways of, of darkness, man, of death. You know? And we know we know what's we know we know what's right and what's wrong, man. We know what's right and what's wrong, man. You know in your spirit that like the brother that one example of uh, watching pornos, you know that shit's off, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's right, that's right. That's that's totally off, man. You got that, bro, in relation? Or you got some more? Yes, yeah, read, it, read it a little loud, bro. Same over there. John 6 and 63. Yeah. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. And which is the words of this book. You know? Yeah. That's how you walk. When you walk, to, to stay continually walking in the spirit, you got to continually stay your mind within these scriptures. Yeah. Let's go right here, bro. Yes, Rock 18, you got something else? No, I was just going to say, the scripture said, the flesh profit is nothing. Because once you follow whatever your fleshly lust was, once you follow that, what's that, what's, what, what gain are you getting from following that lust, man? Mm -hmm. You're not getting no spiritual gain. You, you're actually fucking, you're actually, uh, sinning. you're fucking up, man. You're sinning. And what, what's the, uh, the wages of sin? It's death, man. It's death. That's why, and there's no profit in that, man. There's no profit. You know what I'm saying? So the flesh, whatever your flesh wants you to do, man, just, just fucking, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta pray, man. Yeah, that's that's solid right there. You gotta, that's the scriptures tell you to pray without ceasing. As soon as whatever thought come to your head, man, it could be whatever. Satan will come with all type of shit, man. And that's just like the brother was explaining how you're your own worst enemy. When them demons fuck with you, man, they're speaking to you in your own in your own voice, man. Yeah, they well, they're not gonna talk to you in a different voice. That'll make it too easier for you to deny it. Yeah, deny yeah exactly. it, you know what Then I mean? you'll automatically be like, man, fuck that. Yeah, fuck you know, that. That shit, <laughs> hell no. But since since that demon is actually in your mind, man, you know, and 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 and, and you feel like it's yourself, it's, it's it'll make it that much of a challenge to to deny to deny that shit, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's part of that, that war, man. Yeah, and that's a part of, that's, that tells if you have discretion too, because it's your own voice. Your own voice is telling you to do this. Your own voice is telling you to do that. Can you determine that, that things that's being said within your own voice, is it negative? Is it, is it, is it going against the scriptures or is it talking, is it going with the scriptures? Yeah, exactly. That's where the discretion fall in that. But it's your own voice, you know? That shows that you have discretion, man. And it shows that you on a you on a level of some type of understanding. Let's grab that though, bro. Because I don't want to make it too long. This is uh Sirach chapter 18, verse 30. Go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thy appetites. Yep. It says, go not after thy lust, but refrain thyself from thy appetites, man. And that's that's when you're winning the battle, man. Just think of it like this, man. You you on a cross country run, man. You got some cross country runs that they they run from states to states, man. That's a long journey, and this truth is a long. You got to run until your hour shot come back. It's a marathon. It's a marathon. You know, so so you got to continue to be in that war. Just imagine you in a war with infinite uh, infinite fucking armies coming at you, man. And you got to fight them until your hour shot come back. You gonna either continue to fight with the war, or you gonna you gonna drop your sword and, and get sliced up, man. Yeah, that's what it is, too, man. Yeah. We're, we're sir, man. We're the since we got the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh we we got light in us, man. And everything that is not in the circle of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, they're they're legions of demons, man. Yeah. We're literally surrounded by legions and legions of demons, man. Mm -hmm. You know, all day, every day. Every day, bro. So we, we literally are fighting. And these demons, they'll jump on your boss. You know what I'm saying? He'll be a fucking asshole. They'll jump on your woman. They'll jump on your parents. They'll jump on whoever, man. We, we, we're literally fighting, man. Yeah, that's you why know? I was talking about the object. The object is just being used. 
to, to trigger the battle within your head. Yeah. The object is being used, man. Right. Which yeah. which if you fold, whose fault is it, man? Is it the object's fault? Hey, let's or was go. Was it your fault? Let's go um to real quick, bro. Sirak, so um, you how you just said that, bro. Matter of fact, I just grabbed it. Mm -hmm. Sirak, so um, fifteen. Uh, Sirak so 15 and 11 says, Say not thou, it is through the Lord that I fell away, for thou oughtest not to do the things that he hateth. Yeah, man. You, for thou oughtest not to do the things that, that the Lord hates, man. So don't say, you, you, whose fault is it? You, do, whose fault is it is your fault, man. It's your fault. If you let your woman distract you, you can't, that's not your woman's fault, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, we, we've, we've been given instruction on, on how to cast away demons, man. Mm -hmm. Like that one example when they couldn't cast the demon out the boy. Yeah. You know the, and what the Yahweh Shai said, this demon can't come up, come off you, but by fasting and by praying. So if you really got something heavy that you're dealing with, man, that you praying and shit, and, and, and you, you praying and all that, man, and it's still on you, it's still messing with you, then you could use fa fasting, man. We got weapons we could use, man. Yeah. We got defenses, man. Yeah. So there's no reason why you should just fold. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, that's right, man. Let's we finish a little bit of that, then we're gonna switch it. 18. 18. Yeah. 18, verse 31. If thou givest thy soul the desires that please her, she will make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies that malign thee. Yep. So if you give your, your soul the things that it please, you gonna be made a laughing stock to your enemies that malign you. Now, when you look up this word malign in the etymology, it's a verb, so it's an action. So your enemies is gonna be laughing at you that malign you. So when you look that word up, it says to slander, to plot, or to deceive. So your enemies that deceived you, your enemies that plot against you, and your enemies that slander you, you gonna make them laugh at you, man. Yeah. Which is the so-called damn white man. You know what I'm saying? He laughing like, I got that nigga. Yep. I got you from salvation. I knocked you out the war. Just imagine you, he saw, he got you, man. You was, you was, uh, you was, you was swinging sword for sword and he sliced your neck, man. Yeah. And you failed. That's how you gotta imagine it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, verse 32. Take not pleasure in much good cheer, neither be tied to the expense thereof. Be not. Be that's, that's it right there, bro. And that that much much good cheer that'll that'll bring demons on you too, man. Mm -hmm. Hey, the scriptures tell you not to be in the house of mirth, man. Yeah. We we supposed to be in the in in the in the house of mourning, cause look, who like you can bring IUIC to see what much good cheer does, man. It, yeah, yeah, right? You know what I'm you, saying? You were getting your feet washed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Take, taking the whole scripture out of context, man. Y'all was shy when he washed the disciples' feet, man. And when, when Mary Magdalene uh, washed the Lord's feet and stuff, man, that was for purposes, man. It wasn't to put it out, uh, like to show it how IUIC is showing it, man. Yeah, man, that, that shit right there made me angry, man. Because the, the, the reason why the Lord had done that, man, which, the Lord was a, is above us all, man. He's Yahweh's right hand man, and he was showing. He did that as an example to show, like, look, man, ain't no, you can't think yourself basically higher or better than yeah. any other man. Yeah. Here, I, here it is. I'm Lord. I, I've been given everything, and here I am washing your feet, man. So the same way that I'm treating you, and and and, and you know the way I, I'm serving you, is how you got to serve your brothers. That's basically the message, man, you know, in a, in, in a roundabout way that that, that was given. Yep, but right. you niggas, man, that, that shit was unspiritual. It was, it was ridiculous, man. Yeah, it, yeah. it actually was mockery, man. It was, it was mockery, bro. You got you got your thumbnail, just a, a black, crusty-ass black woman in the front of it, man. Yeah. Like, man, what the fuck, man? This is this... But, you know, to stay on topic, man. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you a brother... I looked up this word, wonk. Wonk, W-O-N-K, which is a brother that, somebody who seeks answers, man. And that's, a, they got many questions, they want many answers. That's a man of the Lord, man. That's what Edris was doing. He was full of, he was so full of uh, questions and, and the wanting of answers that he fasted, what, about, about uh, 21 days or something like that, like three times in seven days? Seven days, yeah. Eating flowers. Daniel? 
They, they go, they went hard. That's what we are, man. So you have that, you had the thoughts like, man, why it gotta be like this? Why we gotta have this battle and why, why this, but the, the Heavenly Father explained why you gotta be, uh, why he made it to where you your own worst enemy, man. For one, we just went into that, he's a, he's a perfect balance. He created good and evil, you know? And for two, we gonna go and set, go to second edges, bro. Yeah, go to second edges. Matter of fact, go to three. Real quick, go to second edges three and read 17 to 22. Second read it a little loud. Second edges chapter three, verse 17. And it came to pass that when thou ledest the seed of the seed, his seed out of Egypt, thou broughtest them up out of up to Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. And barring the heavens, thou didst set fast the earth, movest the whole world, and madest the depth to tremble. Mm -hmm. Troublest the men of that age. So this is Edges talking about the giving brief history on the um, when we was in the land of Egypt, man. How the Lord saved us out of there. Good, huh? And thy glory went through the four gates of fire and of earthquake and of wind and of cold, that thou mightest give the law unto the seed of Jacob and diligence unto the generation of Israel. Mm -hmm. And yet tookest thou not away from a wicked heart, not. Slow. And yet took us down not away from them a wicked heart. So when the Heavenly Father gave Moses the statute laws and the commandments, he didn't get when he gave it to us, he didn't give us the mind to where we could follow it to a perfect T. He left that 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 wicked heart in us, man. Meaning that the most high wanted us to. We gotta go through this, you know? Because when he gave when he gave the laws to Moses and Moses to get it to the people, he could have made it from that point then that we could have followed it from to a T. But that wasn't not his agenda, man. You know? So that just shows you that the most high wanted us to, he wanted us to deal with that battle, man. <laughs> you know, he wanted us to deal with that life and you either gonna choose life or death battle. You know? Go ahead, I. This is uh, James 1 and 13. It says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of the Most High. Yeah. For the Most High cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. So that's what it is. It's you, you choosing death when you decide to be led away with, by your own lust. Yeah. So you're, you're leading yourself away from the, the life that Moses was talking about, and you're getting towards the death, man. Yeah. Yes, yes. Go ahead, all right. It says, uh, but every man that is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and, and enticed, mm -hmm. then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Yep, that's what it is, man. <laughs> so that's, hey, let, let's finish reading a little bit in the edges, bro. Verse uh, 21. For the first Adam bearing a wicked heart transgressed and was overcome, and so be, all they that born of him. Yep, so that's why when Adam, when we was the Adamites, we transgressed. And then our seed that came after us had to deal with the same thing. So th this ain't the first generation that we dealing with this, this being our own worst enemies, man. We have been dealing with this since Adam, since we was the Adamites. So this ain't nothing new, man. So knowing that the battle ain't nothing new, that triggers your mind to be like, look, I'm gonna take this on head first. I done been doing this, man. Even though we have no remembrance, but you knowing that you've been doing this, meaning that, hey, let's go. This ain't nothing new to me. Go ahead, Ark. Thus, infirmity was made permanent in the law also in the heart of the people with the malignity of the root, so that the good departed away and the <laughs> evil abode still. So when we transgress as Adam, that mani mani manig malignant Malignity. Malignity. That means like wickedness. That that shit stayed with us, man. That's making our back. That's why, hey, the scripture said it, the, the angels that left their first estate, that state of being perfect. being perfect. We left that, and now we in these chains of darkness now, man. This flesh that's given to fucking lust. But we can't give in to that. Let's jump to second ever seven, and then we're going to close it out on, these, on this one, bro. And then y'all brothers, whatever y'all got. Read a little loud, bro. Second Ezra chapter uh, seven, verse 48. O thou Adam, what hast thou done for, thou, for though it was thou that is 
that sin. Mm -hmm. Thou art not fallen alone, but we are that come of thee. So what we did is the Adamites triggered up down to us to this day. Everybody that came after him. Go ahead. I... For what profit is it unto us if there be promised us in the mortal time? Whereas we have done the works that bringeth death, and that there is promised us an everlasting hope, whereas ourselves being most wicked are made vain, and that there are laid up for us dwellings of health and safety, whereas we have lived wickedly, mm -hmm. and that the glory of the Most High is kept to defend them which have led a weary life. Mm -hmm. Whereas we walked in the most wicked ways of all. Yeah, we, we've been led in a weary ass life. You know, trying to stay right. Even the two thirds, they try to be right, you know, but they just can't. They just can't. That's why, but because the Most High put a block on them. He said that uh, at least they'd be converting to be healed. The Most High just got a block on them. We, you know, but we live in a, a weary ass life, but through the mercy of Yahweh Bashem El Shai, sending Yahweh Shai, even though we live that wicked life, we're going to still we gonna, uh, be able to receive the kingdom through mercy, though. Good, huh? Verse uh, 53. And that there should be showed a paradise whose fruit endureth forever, wherein is security and medicine, since we shall not enter into it. For we have walked in, um, in unpleasant places, and that the faces of them which have used an abstinence shall shine above the stars, uh -huh. whereas our faces shall be blacker than darkness. Now that's the word I want to focus on, this word abstinence. You ever heard, uh, say for instance, a woman that doesn't want to have sex no more? She, they, they call it, I'm using abstinence. Or a person who doesn't want to smoke, they say, I'm using abstinence. Well, guess what? You got to use abstinence um, when you come to this truth, man. Which, when you look this word abstinence up in the, uh, I believe it's uh, the, the, the etymology, it's a noun that says forbearance and indulgence of appetite. <laughs> forbearance in your appetites. It says self-restraint integrity so we got to be practicing abstinence in this truth from the flesh staying abstinence from the flesh and we we'll read that verse again when it said about the abstinence uh, verse 55 and the faces of them which have used abstinence shall shine above the stars the man who used abstinence who 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 had integrity and not and self-restraints against the flesh they're gonna face is gonna shine above the stars all right go ahead huh? Whereas our faces shall be blacker than darkness. Right, go ahead. For while we lived and committed iniquity, we considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. Uh -huh. Then answered he me and said, this is, the this is the condition of the battle which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. Uh -huh. That if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast said. But if he get the glory, I mean get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I say. So, <laughs> this is the condition of the battle, man. You either going to choose left, life or you're going to choose death. And the ones who choose life, they gotten the victory over the flesh, man. They gotten the victory over being their own worst enemy, man. But the ones who choose death, they're going to receive the things that, that the angels was telling angels about, which was the day of doom, the, the, the fountains of water stopping. Uh, second Ezra, the 15th chapter. They gonna receive that, man. The, the, the seditious among men. The, the warring against, you know, another man enter to another man's house. They gonna receive them things, man. But the ones who get the victory, they the ones that got the life. They the ones that gain Yahweh shot. And let's read this last verse, bro. Verse 59. For this is the life whereof Moses spake unto the people while he lived, saying, Choose thee life that thou mayest live. That's right, man. So that's what it was, man. So the battle was all within you, man. It's all within you. You your own worst enemy, man. It's, you're going to pick life or death. Either or you're going to pick. You know what I'm saying? Whatever, whichever one is, that suits you. You know what I mean? But the elect, they're going to choose life because we want the victory. You know? So with that, man, we're going to... Hey, Wild and Brakatai Yabashimi Al-Shai for allowing us to do this inspiration and motivation. We pray that you out there, out there was inspired and motivated and you know to think upon how you your own worst enemy 
and, and practice conquering it, man. Practice conquering your flesh, the things that your flesh like giving it to, and just continue to war, man. You know, us brothers, we warring together, man. We not we in different states, but we warring together, man. You know, so with that, we're gonna close it out. We're gonna say, Kahala, you have Bashanah Shai, Mashanaka Bashalak Yayam, and Shalom Bakasala Habakya. Shalom.